Good morning team, this is Chris Abraham from mteltestprep.com. I want to go over the square problem that was on last Saturday's general curriculum MTEL math exam. I'm sure you remember this problem. You're given a big square with dimensions of 1 by 1, and then your this square is divided into four squares, four smaller squares, and then one of those squares is divided into four more smaller squares. <coughs> and the final square is divided into four teeny squares. And the question is, first of all, what is the area of these squares? And what part of the whole are these shaded, these shaded regions? So if we, first we've got to find out what the whole is and what is the area of the big box. Well, that would be, you know, the, you know, I know the area formula for a box, a square, pardon me, that's length times width. Length times width. And, and for a square, since the sides are the same, I'm just going to do 1 times 1. Or 1. And we could also think of this, since it is a square, sometimes we use the formula side squared. Since it's a, we're dealing with a square that, and the sides are the same, so this would be 1 squared equals um, 1. Now I'm going to, for practical purposes, I'm going to stick with length times width as my formula, because I think it's, it's, it's more standard. You can use this for a square, you can use this for a rectangle. I'm going to go stick with this one as opposed to this side square. It works. It's the right idea. It may save a little time. But I think it, this is a more general and a, sort of a better way to work through the problem. So, now we're going to go to the first shaded region. Hmm, what's the dimension? I think that the student did get the dimension correct, one half. It makes sense. This is half of one, so that would be one half. This measurement right here, well, it's half of one fourth. Of one, pardon me, I just gave the answer. It's half of one half, or one fourth. And this tiny one is half of one-fourth, or one-eighth. So now we have the size of our three squares. If I, if I find out the areas of these, you know, we have our big one, one-fourth, times one, pardon me, one-half, times one-half, we have our slightly smaller one, you know, one-fourth, one times one-fourth, and then we have our teeny tiny one, one-eighth, times one-eighth, and this is where sometimes you can get you know, tripped up, multiplying fractions. How do you multiply fractions? Really easy. First of all, you're going to line it up like this. And I, I have to remember that when I multiply fractions, I always multiply the numerator times the numerator. Or better yet, just think, multiply the tops by the tops and the bottoms by the bottoms. So here we have 1 times 1 gets you 1. 2 times 2 gets you 4. Bang! The area of this, um, this square right here is one-fourth the area of the whole, or we could say one-fourth um, feet squared. So I'll just say one-fourth, this is, let's say, one foot squared, this is one-fourth foot squared. Now I'm going to do the same thing for the middle box. One-fourth times one-fourth, multiply the tops by the tops and the bottoms by the bottoms, I get one-sixteenth feet squared. Squared. Why am I saying feet squared? Well, we're dealing with area. When we, when we represent something in area, we always put whatever the units are squared. Now, I didn't see this exact problem. This problem was sent in by some amazing students that I worked with this time on the general curriculum uh, uh, math subtest. Um, and they sent this in, and I didn't see a unit, so I'm, I'm just placing the feet squared. It could have been centimeters, it could have been meters, um, but you get the idea. It's one fourth units squared, or one sixteenth units squared. And the last one, one eighth times one eighth gets us one over sixty four feet squared. Now, now I'm asked to find out really uh, add these up and find out what portion of the shaded boxes are the whole box. Well, <coughs> we're going to add up these fractions, but before we do. I just want to um, think about this, you know, and see if this works out. If I just visually looked at this, 
Let's see. Visually, you know, I really, I almost want to say it looks to me visually like it's going to be a third. I mean, just just visually, I'm sorry. Yeah, it looks like it's gonna it's gonna be somewhere between a third and a fourth. My answer because it's almost if it was just this box right here, it would be a fourth, but it's a little extra. So it's a little bit more than a fourth, but a little less than a third. So let's let's work this problem out. Let's um, let's find out the answers to this problem, shall we? So I think I can do it right here. I'm going to add one fourth plus one sixteenth plus one sixty fourth, and I do that by finding the common denominator, the number that is shared is a uh, multiple. Sometimes you say common divisor. I like to think, what's a multiple of 4, 16, and 64? And that would be the number 64. This is a number that, you know, 4 goes into evenly, 16 goes into evenly, and 64 goes into evenly. Let's start with 64. 64 goes into 64 evenly one time. So I do 1 times 1, I get 1. 16 goes into 64, hmm, 4 times. So I just put a little 4 here to help me remember. 16 times 4 is 64. 1 times 4 is 4. Then I do my last one. 4 goes in 4 times what? Sometimes you pl I play this game with uh, you know, my students. 4 times what gets 64? 4 times 16. So I write a little 16 here to help me remember. 4 times 16 is 64. 1 times 16 is 16. Now I can add up my fractions. I have fractions of all common denominators. This works out very nicely. 16 plus 4 is 20, plus 1 is 21 out of 64. Just looking at this visually, it's really close to one third. So my 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 answer, my my first assumption of it being, you know, somewhere between one fourth and one third is right on makes sense, and the uh, when I add up the fractions, it does make sense that the shaded regions are 24 out of 64. What does that mean? You know, roughly, roughly, approximately, not exact, but approximately, the shaded regions are one-third the whole. And there's a lot of ways that you're going to solve this. They want to see it done this way. They want to see you get to 21 64, and they'd like you to come up and say, you know, it's approximately one-third. But you could also, you know, as a double check, because you always have to have a double check. It's like an extra, it's like insurance. The double check is to look at the picture. Look at the picture and say, does my answer make sense? And these are things that you can use when you're critiquing the student's work. Well, obviously, you can explain, you know, how they should have multiplied the fractions, finding the air, multiplying, you know, uh, fractions out. Sure, you can correct them on that mistake. Um, you can um, explain to them um, how to add fractions with unlike denominators. But ultimately, you want to also um, be able to say to them, looking at the visual picture, you know, what is a reasonable, you know, response? And a reasonable response would mean what could it possibly be? Well, something if they came up with an answer that was, let's say, I don't know, two thirds. You might say, wait a second now, does this look like two-thirds? And so these are, the, these are some extra things that you can uh, point out in your essay. Okay, we've run out of time. I hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions, please visit my website, mteltestprep.com. Again, this is Chris Abraham. I'm wishing everyone the best. Send in your questions. I'll be more than happy to post a response on YouTube. Thanks a lot, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.